now we're recording. You can go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm calling, seeing a, the presence of a quorum, I'm calling the Government Organization and Legislative Committee to order at 9.32 a.m. on September 27th. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay. Um, and I don't, there doesn't seem to be any uh, public in attendance. Um, I wanted to go over quickly, we're gonna be looking at the stretch energy code um, and reviewing the uh, rules of procedure. But I'd like to go to the disposition of the bylaws because I think that we're fine on that. Um, we had made a, if, so if that's okay with people, and then we'll go to the stretch code and get that set. And from there, go to rules and procedures. Um, on 8.30, we voted, I believe, um, to let the council know that we were taking no action on three, 0.7 licenses and permits, 3.2 special board of appeals. Uh, we were making a referral to uh, TSO of the peaking and peering because of the drone issue. Uh, CRC has received 326, the nuisance house. Uh, so we don't have to deal with that. But um, I, I need, we were looking at historic districts and zero energy. So the we agreed on 7 12, uh, 12 that no action was needed, but I don't know if we took a vote to get that to council or made a motion to get it to council. And the historic district, I have not heard anything about that. And I guess, Jennifer, is there an update on the animal uh, bylaw? <laughs> I just don't hear back. Okay. So, I've all written right. Three times. So I'm, I'm thinking there isn't. But yeah, so I my preference um, would be to take no action on that on the animal and to take no action on the historic districts. Does it really make a major difference? No, and I want to hear I, from I, you. major difference uh, whether on ZBA it's uh, associates and on historic districts it's alternates or vice versa. But I want to hear from Athena. Um, because the committee is charged with, I mean, to, to just get this out of committee because the answers we're waiting for are from staff, you can just request, like the list of other bylaws that we're waiting for information from Paul, you can just yeah. recommend the council request information in order to take those up or add them to the list of bylaws just so that it's, it's in Paul's court. So if and when um, they're ready for changes, that, that's my suggestion. Okay. And do you think, Pat, we're ready to put this on the agenda? On Well, yeah, the... that's what I wanted to, yeah, that's why I wanted to do it. with me. Okay. All right. So do you want to add it to, to the next meeting uh, or the meeting after that? doesn't matter, but I will need to know whether I'm writing anything. Uh, I just as soon put it on. It's not urgent. Uh, I just as soon put it on this one. What do you think, Athena? Mandy Joe has her hand up though. Yeah. Mandy? Yeah, so so my question was, I think for the ones that we recommended no action, nothing has to go on an agenda. And so I just wanted to clarify what's going on an agenda. I think with Athena's recommendation, the only thing going on an agenda would be the animals and the historic districts mm -hmm. of and, a and the referral to tso yeah. on the drones oh did we not refer that to tso yet the the okay. council didn't refer it because the the way the committee discussed it was the council should decide if yeah. they want tso to do something about this or just leave it the way it is for now okay 
But um, I, but I would say that the you know the GOL report on all the bylaws would be on the agenda, and then the the recommended actions would be. Yeah, but yeah. Th that that works for me. But I I, I didn't want I wanted to make sure we weren't going to put on an agenda something like the council votes to take no action on special right. board <laughs> appeal. There's something like that. <laughs> like, okay. No, I I think what we're trying to do is get rid of this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. Bluntly. <laughs> uh, that's about as now. So, so a memo or, would need to go in by tomorrow. Yeah, by Friday or tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Friday or tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> we haven't gotten to that part of the rules yet. Okay. So, at, so technically to, today. <laughs> oh. Stupida. That I'm referring to myself. <laughs> I'll try and get I'll try and get the draft minutes to you, so you have the the motions and votes to, to okay. made today. Can I just be clear? So we've already referred nuisance. That's already referred, but we yes. should record that in this report. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We are recommending referring peaking and peering to TSO. TSO. Yep. And okay. I think that I think the committee vote on that one was to it might have been wordier than just refer to TSO. I think it was part of the part of the committee discussion was to recommend the council make a decision rather than just automatically refer. Thank you. Thank you. Good plan. Uh, and historic districts, what are we doing here? That's there's a um I don't even remember. For historic yeah, districts okay. and, and animals, it was just, I mean, the committee can recommend no a action and just in the report say if the town manager wants to bring changes or the committee can recommend the town manager, you know, officially, um, I, I forget how we phrased it for the other list of bylaws that we're waiting for information from the town manager, but add add those two to the list. So Jennifer has her hand Andy up. Knows. Yeah, I mean, for local store district commission, it was something about having alternates. I, I've right. never known them to have alternates. No, no, so. yeah, they have alternates. the The issue was what I did say before. What they call them? CBA. Associates. It's called associates, or or it could be the other way. And on the historic district, it's uh, al alternates, and it could be either way. It just doesn't seem. I mean, it was very important to Bob Ritchie, but it doesn't feel particularly important. I would imagine, frankly, on the planning department's to-do list, that's just getting lost because yeah. it's so yeah. unimportant. Which makes, yeah. Mandy? Yeah, I, I, I was not going to answer Athena's question. It was something like to direct the manager to propose changes or something in accordance, you know, or review in accordance. It was something like that. But I think what I would recommend, I wouldn't recommend that right now. I think I'd vote against such a recommendation to the council. As Jennifer just said, I think these two items are so low on the need list at five years after it was, four years after it was recommended by by bylaw review committee, right? That that I, I don't want to put more on Paul's plate that's just no, I don't. cleaning up stuff like this. I, I would rather just say, there's no action needed. I I agree with that. I agree too. Okay. And but are we still do we've already voted on the peaking and peering. I just don't want to have a huge amount of time at the council meeting <laughs> absorbed over whether or not this gets recommended. Do we is this where we want to go? I mean, that was the vote was that the council should decide whether it's worth TSO time to consider changing it for drone purposes. I, I think you could limit the discussion to that and then figure yeah. where people are, right? Like it, it's do does the council want to spend time on modifying peaking and peering to include drones? Got it. Okay. And I I think if we can do this on this meeting, it's good because then we just clean this piece up. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So peaking and peering, we're, and in the memo, there'll be no action on the historic district or animals. Um, and- Shall I make a motion? 
I was yes, going to say please. that there was agreement on zero energy that no further action is needed. Right. Are you going to put all of them into a motion, Mandy, or just? I was going to do all three <laughs> in one motion. All right, go for it. Um, I move to recommend the town council take um, no action on general bylaw 3.21 regulations related to animals, general bylaw 3.49 historic districts, and general bylaw 3.510 energy. Okay. Now on 8.30, we voted to take no action on the special board of appeals or the license and permits. So do we don't have, do we have to, that should be in the memo, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's shaking their head, but Pat's not watching us. <laughs> <laughs> what are you shaking your head about me? He's I'm saying yes. Everyone's yes. nodding. Yeah. Everybody was nodding, but you weren't watching. So. Yeah, everything. No, no, everything. Okay. Add everything. All right. All right. That's done, I think. Unless we, we need a vote. Need a motion. Second and a vote. I, I second. Second. Pick it up, theory. Second. <laughs> okay. The motion proposed by Mandy Joe has been seconded by Lynn. Uh, so, shall we ready to vote? Start with Mandy Joe. Aye. Lynn? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. And I'm an I. Okay, do this. Congratulations. We got through all the bylaws. I was on that original bylaw review committee, so this is like. <laughs> no, you were on the one that followed after. Oh, I after thought, that. Bylaw I thought there was a bylaw review committee that preceded the council. Yes, there was. And then I sat on the council one with Alyssa and Evan yes. and. Yeah. yeah, it was fun, mm -hmm. um, but I'm sick of it right now. Just <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's go to the stretch energy code. We have the material from uh, KP Law. Yeah. And is there anything, are there any questions or do I? Um, So I would just say KP Law hasn't technically reviewed the document that's being proposed. But as I said, I think to Pat, this language comes directly from DOER as a as the model language to adopt specialized energy code. So um, we just copied their language that they recommended in CRC. Right. They when I, I don't have it right in front of me, I was just gonna try and pull it up, but there were things about like the date should there should be clarity, and I believe there is clarity about that how the stretch code is in place until we begin. The other thing that I noticed when I looked at their thing, they're saying should people have a choice initially about which code they go with? And is that in the bylaw? I did not look at the bylaw again this morning. I'm sorry. So that, that is not in the bylaw. That was when we were asking, could you adopt it in January? Right. Um, less than six months after the vote, since DOER and everyone recommends not, not when you adopt, say, a specialized energy code, you put it at least six months out from right. the, you know, the effective date is six months later. And so we were saying, well, what if we wanted to make it January 1? And they said, well, you could make it optional um, between January and June. That seemed more complicated than just saying July 1. Um, yeah. if, if Athena Page is down, the, the motion that CRC voted to recommend is, is basically down there. Um, although our motion was as as presented at CRC, not as shown on these random pages of a motion sheet that doesn't exist. Um, but um, that that's where we added the clarity in for the effective date and that the stretch code remains in effect until then. Um, for that same reason, CRC said 
re basically recommends we quote revise general bylaw 3.48, not rescind and replace. Um, because rescind and replace could get a little less clear that right. even though it says it in the bylaw. So even though it essentially is a rescind and replace, it's technically a revise with all those strike throughs under this motion. Okay. Uh Lynn? Is this the one that Northampton just adopted? Yes. Thank you. Well, it's the code. I don't know what their bylaw looked like, but right. yeah, they adopted the same code. Right. Okay. Are there any questions or any reason that we can't recommend this to the town council as presented? Uh, declare clear, consistent, actionable. Yes. Yeah. All that schmuggy. <laughs> to recommend to the town council that by law, would it 3.48 um, be um, stretch energy code? The stretch energy code uh, declare, we declare it clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. Okay. And shall we vote? Okay. Lynn? Aye. Jennifer? All right, I have to the unmute. Yes. And it's an aye for me, Mandy. Aye. Okay. All right. Then we're finished with that. Whoa. Now we can go to the what? Did we, did we do gender affirming health care bylaw? I we did that. But it's coming up for the first read on Monday night. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um let me see. Sorry, I, I have a question that I just realized for the motion for stretch energy or specialized energy. Okay. There's a required hearing. We might oh. need to add that into the draft motion that I completely forgot after having held a public hearing on right. X date or something. Then we then we have to schedule the hearing. No, CRC held the public hearing oh, you at did. the request of that. So we just might need to modify. I'd forgotten that. We normally put that in a lot of our, when there's required things. We don't do it for the zoning bylaws, but I don't know whether it would be wise to do it for this one or not. We do it for like the budget stuff. What do you think, Athena? Uh, I think it's helpful to have so that when we go and look back to see how things were done, um, we're not as consistent as we ought to be about doing that, but it's it's helpful. I'll put it I'll put a new motion language into my report. Great. Thank you. Okay. And um, Mandy, send that language to me also so that I can add it if I want to to the my memo. Okay. Just to clarify, Mandy Joe, you said you've already held the hearing. Yes, we held yeah. it on the 21st. Thank you. And uh, Pat, the GOL report just has to, I mean, the GOL is just doing clear, consistent, and action. Right, that's true. Okay. Okay. So now we get to the fun part of the meeting, which is to look at rules of procedure. And I am not even sure where we are anymore in that. So Jennifer, do you remember where we ended? I have um I have notes. Hang on. Okay. I usually put a little reminder where we left off. Just so you know, I'm having some trouble with my computer. Okay. I think we're in. There we go. Sorry for scrolling and scrolling. That's all right. That's all right. So. Can you make it a little larger? Just a tad. I can see it, but um, okay. See you later, safe and soon, Carol. So um, I think the question was: absent member, absent counselors, are they prevailing or non-prevailing side for reconsideration? Was the discussion? And 
Shall we look? Does anybody have anything? <laughs> So it does seem to me that we should have absent counselors on the non-prevailing side. No. Oh, on the non-prevailing side, I guess. Absent or family. Mandy? Oh, I was going to say Jennifer can go first. Okay. She's got more solid thoughts than me. <laughs> I don't have solid thoughts. I actually have a question. So I'm just trying to, if a counselor votes no, how are they on the prevailing side? They're not. They're not. Any counselor voting with the non, wait, motions? No, if, if no's fail. Right. No. So motions I the vote, non. no's are the prevailing side. But oh, if, okay, right. if the vote's three, yes, 10, no, the no's are the prevailing side. So whether no or yes is the prevailing side, the question is who can bring a reconsideration? Right. And it's just the prevailing side, I would think, or anybody well, on the non-prevailing would always bring a, ask for reconsideration. So the prevailing side can bring a reconsideration, the non-prevailing side needs to be accompanied by new or additional information. That's the difference. Oh, okay. And the other thing is the tie vote issue. Yeah. Uh, the tie vote's not an issue because a, a tie vote is, it does no, not it's pass. Prevailing. Correct. Now this is not getting to the issue of what an abstention counts as. An abstention counts. So my recommendation was that abstentions count as non-prevailing because a counselor chose not to vote. I agree. Um, and that absent counselors would be considered non-prevailing because they, it, it, it didn't make sense to me to consider them prevailing um, because they didn't vote yes. And if the motion passed, then it, it wouldn't make sense for them to have a motion for reconsideration without additional information. Um, but th but there wasn't, it didn't seem like the committee had agreement. Mandy's got her hand up too. Go ahead, Mandy. Yeah, I'm, so, so some of what Jennifer brings up is section B of this is the change from Robert's rules, which is why it's in this rules because Robert's rules, if we defaulted there, only prevailing side motions are allowed. Um, for reconsideration, but I, I actually don't know whether Robert's rules indicates what abstain or absent voters, whether absent or abstains are at all. I would I would bet if they did do it, abstain would not be considered a prevailing side because of the same reasons Athena do. And I absolutely agree that if you've chosen, if you were at the meeting and chosen not to vote, you don't get the, you know, the 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 sort of privilege that the prevailing side people get of being able to reconsider without new information if you chose not to vote. I struggle with the absent one, and this is where I don't know what's right. In some sense, I say, well, you weren't at the meeting, so yeah, you shouldn't get the sort of privilege of saying, I want to reconsider without any additional information because you weren't at the meeting. Um, but at the same time, you weren't at the meeting, and if the vote's close, when you're looking at it from a, as elected officials, where does the body stand? If the vote is a 6-6 six, six tie and someone wasn't at the meeting, maybe it makes sense to be able to reconsider with, quote, no additional information to break that tie if the person, if, if someone that's absent is there, right? And so I, I just don't know what is better for the council from that absent counselor point of view when you have those close votes and someone happens not to be there um for whatever reason you know should should that if if it is a one vote difference or two people were absent and it, it 
if it would change it if they were present, should they need to bring new information in order to reconsider that vote or should they not have to? And frankly, is new information, hey, if all 13 of us are here, the outcome's different, right? I don't, you know, I, I just don't know what's right. Yeah, I'm not sure if I do either. It seems, it feels like it could become some kind of negative strategy um, to say, oh, well, there's a time, you know, now I'm going to change it because I wasn't here when you have a responsibility to be present. And many people are present when they're sick. They're present when they're traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think they should get any special privilege. Jennifer and then Lynn. Actually, Jennifer, go first. That's what I said. No, but Lynn raised her hand first. No, no, no. Jennifer, please go before me. I agree with Pat. And I think now that we can zoom into meetings, it you can be traveling and, and you could even, you know, yeah. You, I, I, I agree with Pat. I think that it, I just fear that there would be, all, there would be strategizing. Hey, Lynn. Um. Yeah. And although there are times when people are absent and they cannot zoom in, mm -hmm. but that is a judgment call. I mean, you know, you're in the hospital, you're in a remote area without connectivity. Um bluntly it was your anniversary and you know you decided that you didn't want to piss off your spouse um you know just something that basically you know really is a very firm legitimate excuse for not being there so that but i don't think we can word this in a way that kind of gets at the legitimacy of being absent so i'm not clear that we can do anything more than what it's stated here. But I, I, Mandy, Joe, you brought up a really good point. And that is, you know, if the person that was absent for whatever reason would swing the vote, that's new information. Mm, Mandy and then Jennifer. So my next thing that I want to bring up is maybe I wouldn't have as much of a problem with absence being non-prevailing sides if our charter was not written in such a way that that absent person still counts to many of our votes as a no vote, no matter what. Um, essentially, because we have so many votes that require a majority of the number, the full town council, whether or not 13 people are present. And so you might have 11 people there and we've, we've seen these situations 11 people there all 11 vote it's six five but it fails even though it received a majority of those present because it needed seven because of how our charter is written and so i guess this is this is why i don't know what the right answer is because our charter is a lot of times written to not to not be majority prevails if all 13 people aren't even present, um, in a sense. Um, we don't have many meetings where all 13 are not present, which is great. And, and one of the things that is, is good about a council is we basically always have all 13 present except in extenuating circumstances. But if we don't, you know, that that one vote, even the, the council may get a majority in the vote, but it still may not pass because the majority is not a majority of those present and present even not present in voting isn't actually a majority of the full town council and the by the charter requires a full town council so again i how do you deal with that and, and then you're just guessing who was absent and what their vote would be right and so you know i i think i'd be okay this way if the absent person can say, but if I vote, the vote would change is counts as new information. But I, I don't know again, whether even we wanna go back to stuff like that. How, how often does it happen? I'm not actually sure in the five years we've been here, I think it's happened once. Um, 
exactly once where something like that would have swung something. So it doesn't happen very often. So maybe we're stressing over it for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Jennifer has a hand up. Yeah, and then uh, I see now. I do, don't think somebody being absent and changing the vote is new information. I just I just don't see how. Yeah, doesn't feel like new information to me either. Um, you know, the only reason I made this recommendation was to clarify what happens in this situation, not because it happens all the time. Right. Um, I I I kind of want to say if it's if it's difficult to decide, then leave it out and we'll figure out what, if and when it does happen. Um, <laughs> but that kind of defeats the purpose of that recommendation in the first place. <laughs> Lynn and then Jennifer. I'm gonna go back up to A. I think the second sentence in A needs to oh. read, in case the measure decided by a tie vote, any counselor voting in the positive or negative will be considered as voting with the prevailing side. The way it's written here, it's it it's so what if the what if the tie, the prevailing side was no? That set, second sentence makes no sense. Yes, it does, because of voting in the negative means that the motion a tie vote means the motion failed. And so voting no was okay. prevailing. Okay. Because okay. because it did not pass. They voted no and it didn't pass. Mm -hmm. well, but why so that's prevailing? Why are we favoring what if somebody from the yes side wants to bring it back up? Then they need to bring more information. Yeah, it's the new information. No, so no, it's not just so it's not just the motion failed and I wish it passed and I just want the council to vote on it again. It's the motion failed, it didn't pass. And now I have new information that might compel the council to change their mind. One way or the other. All right. What do you, is that okay? I mean, it's, it's up to you if you, want to, if you want to do something different, but that's the law. I think that's the logic behind this. Um, Anything else on that, Lynn, before I go to Jennifer? No, go ahead. Jennifer? No, I was just, if we wanted a real world example that the, the grass versus the artificial turf, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving week, it was six to six and Pat, you were absent. So that was, I can't even imagine how many emails you were getting. It turned out we had more <laughs> information there was more information brought, so right. it didn't have to be the swing vote, but that, I mean, we're just going to look at an example of something with a lot of public attention where we were in this situation where right. one vote, I mean, it had to make a difference because it was one, you know, we were tied. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I think, I think so here, if you use that as an example. So, so something that I, I wouldn't recommend putting in the rules, but is a mechanism for a counselor who is absent would be to ask another counselor to say, this vote is really important to me and I can't make it to the meeting. Can you move to postpone it? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Or or just, uh, you know, use your charter right to postpone. I mean, I like I said, I wouldn't put that in the rules, but there is another mechanism for... Um... So what we're stuck on is in B, whether right. somebody who abstained or is absent. Only is absent. I think you know, there was agreement that an abstention would count as a no. So we're taking... We're taking that out? No, I think there's agreement that an abstain, if you choose to abstain, you are the non-prevailing side. Right, no matter Just which one is out to the non-prevailing okay. side. Right if you choose to abstain and it's the absent. I, I kind of like, you know, 
maybe, you know, the charter right to postpone is not supposed to be as contentious as it always has been, you know, and in some sense, I kind of like what Athena says, you know, if, if someone's going to be absent and they're looking at a vote, trying to get that mo that, you know, we do that for sponsored things. It's actually in our rules that if a sponsor can't be at a meeting, there should not be a vote on the measure the sponsor has sponsored, right? That That's like a couple of rules down <laughs> in, in terms of the rules of procedure. And so normalizing using the charter right to postpone or saying, you know, there, there's issues with Sometimes votes have to happen no matter what because of timing, but right. but normalizing, you know, we're going to try and take big votes only when all 13 of us are here because these votes are, you know, they th it matters, right? And and that's why we're all here. We we all make that effort to show up. So so maybe in that case, absent is okay because there's other, as Athena said, there's other ways to ensure potentially ensure that if someone is absent, the vote might not have to happen. Yeah, I mean, another way, and I, I don't think you want to put this in the rules, is that person could say, you know, this is a vote that's really important to me. I can't be at the meeting. Would you, the president, postpone it to the next meeting? Yeah, that's exactly and, what I was going to suggest. And, yeah. you know, would the president can share that, you know, so-and-so is absent tonight has asked for this to be postponed. I have agreed. Boom done yeah yeah i like that and and so i think that and i think that goes along with what jennifer said about you know being having being yeah. absent from a vote not being new information because um i i think if if we hadn't had this discussion and we had run into this situation and lynn asked me if that's new information, I would have said no. <laughs> and then the, the council would have had to hash that out, but um, that it, it circumvents that issue, I think. Yeah. So are we okay with this? I think so. I think we are. I, okay. Just took us 45 minutes to get there. <laughs> no, well, this, I'm not surprised. It's a little confusing, yeah. So okay. okay. Athena. The next. <laughs> Maybe we can get through one or two of these a little easier. <laughs> the next one, I didn't expect any of these to be this controversial. The next one is 8.4 discussion of measures. Let me get down to where. Okay. Um, so what I recommended. Uh, the current rule requires council discuss proposed bylaws, regulations, and policies at a council meeting prior to the meeting on which the measure is voted. Since the council narrowed the scope of this rule, the council's practice has not been to read policies and regulations at a meeting prior to the vote. So I recommended striking the first sentence of 8.4 to consistently treat policies and regulations as non-bylaw measures. Hmm. Lynn? I, I don't necessarily agree. And the reason I don't necessarily agree is I'm going to, you know, reflect on some of our regulations around sewer and water, things that really, really impact people. And for the council to not provide um, two readings or two considerations, I think is, leaves us open to not being as transparent as we should. Mandy? Um, I don't know where I stand. I think regulations are similar to bylaws, so I would at least keep regulations in. Policies, I don't know. There's different classes of policies, I think. Um, you know, in some sense, our rules of procedure are policies, yet we don't now. We got rid of the reading of them at a meeting before we changed them, right? We we just moved it to a supermajority vote. Um, something like the comprehensive housing policy. 
it's big, but it's much more of a guidance document than a defend than something like a regulation. Whereas the policy on public ways that delegates information doesn't seem as big as the comprehensive housing policy, but might actually have more um, regulatory authority. So policies as a whole, I'm not, there's just different classes that I think some can probably not need two readings, others could. Um, we haven't been following it, so then I go there. But what I actually raised my hand to say was, if we do delete the first sentence, I actually think the whole the whole rule can go because the second sentence I don't think has anything to do with discussion of measures versus we have the charter right to postpone a section on that in the rules completely. And so I think if we delete the first sentence, we don't need rule 8.4 at all. At all. If we think we need the second sentence, the right to postpone, we should just move that to the right to postpone section rule in our rules and not keep it separate here because that'd be confusing. Jennifer, and then I'd like to say something. Yeah, so I, th I think it should stay as two readings. I mean, something like the comprehensive housing policy, it may just be a guide, but people, the thing is they get quoted all the time. And I so, yeah, I think it becomes almost more important because of how it can and is used. I mean, that's one reason, you know, I, don't, I was such a stickler about the engage um, report in CRC about the rental because, you know, it's out there and people quote it and, you know, so they, it's, it starts to have a life of its own that long um, outlives all of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, what I'm thinking is there are times, I, I agree, Pretty much with you, Jennifer. Um, I'm also seeing sometimes it can just not need a second reading, different regulations or different. So why not just simply change the shell to May? Because I, then it could go either way, the council may or the, Lynn? I, I, yeah, no, I, mean, up first. I, I don't see reason to change it from shall to may. I, I think the more the rules are firm, the better for future councils. Okay. But okay. also, we've had situations where we've had two readings, and it's very apparent from the first reading that this is a no-brainer, and it's just going to pass. It can then go on the consent agenda, and you know, we're not spending any more time on it. So, okay. it, Or you can waive the rule. To, it, there's ways to do that. Yeah, I think I think if if that's the case, then it would be cleaner to waive the rule. Um, just be consistent about waiving the rule if we're not going to do two readings. Okay. And that way, if people don't want to waive the rule, then it, it goes to the next agenda. So where? I don't Wait see a the second. Mandy and then Lynn. I, I was going to say the same thing. Athena says when we don't think something needs a second reading, you know, if we're changing the policy on public ways to clarify something, we've changed that thing lots of times, sometimes to add stuff, but sometimes just to redo the wording because we screwed up the wording or something, but we're not changing anything. Just on the motion sheet, put waiver of rule 8.4 and then motion to adopt or, you know, to a, a motion to adopt, just stick it right on there to be clear. I, and and I think Lynn was going to say, where's the ability to waive? We always have the ability to waive our rules. Right. <laughs> it's just a motion. We don't have to say it in here. If if you want the waiver to be more than a majority, then you need to put in the rules wa what waiving that rule would require. But any rule can be waived by a majority vote of the council. I think there is something about the, the votes required for waiving the rules. I think that is a, um, I can... I don't think we have it in our rules. There's certain rules. One of these eight point, I think eight point three or eight point six requires something. Um, requires special things. Oh, I thought there was. No, I, we, I, maybe it's amending the rules that I was thinking of. Amending is two thirds, but waiving. Right. I eight eight point three or 8.6 have a specific how to waive that particular rule. One of the like referral beforehands are not consider until. 
Yeah. Um, so I think what I would ask if um, there's not going to be a change to this would be that committees include that in their recommendation. It's helpful to know this isn't controversial. What recommend to change it or to declare clear, consistent, and actionable, and put it on consent agenda, or or put it on consent agenda with waiver of rules, or put, or something like. That. I mean, Just, you yeah. don't have to get into consent agenda, but at least a recommendation on waiving the rule. It, it I th there's been uh, so many feelings about what goes on consent that I think if it comes as a committee recommendation, then it's another decision that Lynn doesn't have to make. <laughs> Well, it, and I, I appreciate that, but I also know that be, between the time a com council committee has made a decision or vote and it comes to the council, it's become controversial. And mm -hmm. so it can be seen as a recommendation, but it's got to be something that the president can say, hey, yeah. you know, yeah. since you all met, yeah, a lot of people have weighed in on this. That makes sense. So, so are we're leaving this like it is. Seems like it. Okay. All right. What's next? Uh, nine. Hang on. Yeah. The council amended rule 1.6 amendment and repeal to require a two thirds vote of the full council for rule changes, but it did not amend rule 9.2, which states rule changes must be read twice in accordance with 1.6. I think we just delete that whole sentence. Right. That's fine with me. Anybody have an objection to that? So we only have to read once? Rules, the, the council changed uh, 1.6 to, instead of reading it twice, it requires a two thirds vote of the council okay, to amend the it. rules, but this still says read twice. Get rid of it. Um, so I, looking at 9.2 again, I, I'm i curious how the two, now the two sentences, but even the three sentences relate to the actual title of the rule, meeting and posting requirements. Well, the third sentence is definitely yeah. related to posting. Yeah, but it's a charter thing, so we can't change it in the rules. So um, <laughs> I know we reference the charter a lot in some of these. Um, I don't know. It, it's easier to have it all kind of referenced here, I think. I, I agree with that. It's just, it's so specific to a certain thing. It's not about like meetings shall be done 48, you know, it's not the OML 48 hour or anything. It just seems like a weird title. Maybe it's because it belongs someplace else. <laughs> I For the moment, I would just leave it there and take yeah. out that sentence. Note it for the next <laughs> council. That's just strange. Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody object to what Lynn just said, that we take it out and we leave everything the way it is? Um, Every, and then you, can you just do thumbs up? I don't think we need to vote if we just... Uh, no, I'm, I'm nobody just raised their hand. Um, but then the second part of 9.2 requires the council to read non-emergency bylaw changes at two separate meetings uh, prior to the at a meeting prior to the vote. Um, so what I put in my recommendation was that if the council chooses or if the committee chooses to retain their requirement to read policies and regulations at a meeting prior to the vote, I suggest adding uh, regulations and policies to this sentence. That's, That's consistent with what we just said above. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Then put it in. Policy changes. 
Yeah, the mm. word change is kind of weird because we don't change, we revise or we rescind. Uh, regulation or policy change. How's that? Revision instead of change. Yeah. Amendment, yeah. the word. Amend I, amendments or amendment. something. Yeah. That works. But make it amendments. No. A. There's an A at the beginning. Must read A okay. proposed. I would just say must read proposed non-emergency bylaw regulation or policy amendments. Otherwise, we're saying you basically have to do things one at a time. Then we'd get rid of the A before the word proposed and yeah. put an S after yeah. amendment. Okay. Right. And I think that it becomes a them then. The very last word of the mm -hmm. sentence. The the charter section reference is no longer fully accurate then. Take it out. <laughs> because that's only for bylaws. Well, or leave it in, say, charter section plus, I don't know. Well, the plus. rules already cited there. Yeah. Yeah. So leave the, the charter. The charter section reference is no longer accurate for that sentence. Okay, fine. I guess it's not. It's not that it's not accurate. It's misleading that it applies to all three when it really only applies to one. On can those three. can we just move this to here behind yeah. bylaw? See charter section. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, excellent. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Athena. The period after the charter section 210A. Thank you. What's next? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, this is great. Um, the following additions to cross-reference the number of votes required by the rules for these items. So seven and favor for passage, election of officers, hold a work session, adopt it. Here, let me just paste this in and you can decide what you want to do with it. There's a couple for two thirds and, and the next ones, but we can do these one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, this is just consistent with the, what's already in the rules. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that little red dot at the. I think it's it, got a It's gone. It's just. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Um, and then for two thirds. There might be others that I missed in putting these in, but it's just, I like having them there. Um, president voting abstentions. So uh, before you go on, Athena. Okay. The, the supermajority one rescind or amend something previously adopted when the original motion required a supermajority. Um, depends on the motion because some of that is nine, not just two thirds of counselors present and voting. Yeah, Jennifer. Um, yeah, I, I know I can go back and read what it's referring to in terms oh. of the zoning changes, what requires um, two readings versus one. Is there any way to summarize that? I mean, what what requires, and, and isn't some of this determined by the state in terms of zoning, what requires a supermajority and what doesn't? For zoning, yeah, um, but that's nine or seven. So that's covered under the nine or seven because our charter requires votes of bylaws to be 
a majority or super majority of the full town council. So that that's where even if there's only 10 people present, if you need a majority, if you if it's a bylaw, you still need seven eyes, not six for 10 people present. You'd still need seven. You'd still need nine if right. it was a two thirds vote, even if only 10 people were present um, because of how the charter is written. So that's why I brought up this one. I'm thinking amend the bio, amend a budget that was previously passed or a bond authorization. The bond authorization, I think, requires nine no matter what. I'm not sure. Um, or to amend a zoning bylaw a week later. Um, requires nine, not just a super majority. So to amend something that was previously adopted like that, you'd need nine, not just two thirds of those present and voting, right? So do you, so um, is what you're saying, this should be two thirds and then we should also put in under nine, where's nine? Nine's right up, is above the seven. Um, then to put in to, to amend something previously adopted when it needed nine. Yeah. Two thirds of counselors present and voting. And then. I think it's nine votes in favor. A space between votes and in. In, yeah. Thank you. Anything else there? I. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should raise my hand. Go ahead, Lynn. I find it strange that if you had to have a super majority a super majority is is i this isn't this isn't a change it's just a consistency <laughs> it's fine go ahead it's fine it's, it's, ju it's just putting in the rules what is already true yeah got it any other changes um, or additions um, or moving things around? If we're okay with this one, then extensions. All I've done here is to just pick what votes are required from the rules and put them in here because it's it's nice to have what what work prior is what number of votes in this number of votes required section rather than having to look through sections and then figure it out so the, the, I'm, this isn't a substantive change it's just you know putting references in here where it's helpful to have references yeah i agree uh, as an aside one of the things that i think we need to do with the new council, because there will be new members on it. They need to get a copy of the rules of procedures right away and be told to review them. Because we do that. Yeah, okay, because there was just a ton of uh, tension about things that I think they sh new councilors should have known when they first, you know, were got, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I appreciate that suggestion. That's something that we're gonna try and try and do a little bit more of an orientation when the new council is seated, like we did at the retreat, maybe a truncated version of what we did at the retreat. Yeah. We, we have in the past sent, or at least for this current council's term, we've sent the rules and asked them to review, but there's just so much that yeah. comes in when, yeah. when councilors are first seated, it's hard to expect that. I keep going back to the, the uh, tense tension around liaisons. Uh, because there were assumptions made about what that role was by different people because they were new. Lynn? So when do we plan to bring this to the council? Never. Um, 
When is the meeting after the uh, Monday's meeting? It's 16th. The 16th. It'll be a good meeting to bring this to. You mean the whole schmoogie? Because I have a change that I want to go back on. Um, yeah. Mandy? So I was going to ask the same thing because I think, Pat, you mentioned at the last council meeting that this council wasn't going to vote on any of the changes we've been talking about. And I I would rather see us vote on almost all of them, if not all of them, and then highlight some for the new council to to maybe look at more closely. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't want to leave a new council with a set of rules that is just marked up and like, yeah. oh, I'll, yeah. I'll vote on these, right? right. Um, but but the document we were just looking at were, was the changes Athena requested. We've got another document out there that has a lot of changes that we've somewhat agreed on and somewhat still were discussing and some that we didn't even get to discussing. And so I think we need to go back to that document too. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them might be in rules that were listed in today's agenda if we want to try and hit those rules today too. But but I think we should do it all at some point, or we could maybe bring Athena's rules, the the document we just went through that are basically Athena's to mm -hmm. one of the next meetings and then the other document to a different meeting. But I think we should not leave the next council with a marked up copy of the rules. Yeah. I we could I, leave I... them with a we did this, but we recommend GOL in the new council consider these four carefully or something, you know, like relook at these four or something like that. There were some that just didn't have a strong consensus. Right. When we looked at them. So that might, th those might be ones that go into the carryover report that GOL had a discussion and. Yeah, and I might want to make a time with you, Athena, if it's something you are willing to do and go back over those notes and things and sort of pull together. We have a meeting on the 11th before the town council meeting on the 16th. And um, I'd like to have that memo ready for that. Does that make sense to people so we can look at? Did you say you were going to you were going to put these on the the agenda for October 16, Len? So, I absolutely would urge that we do that. Yeah. I, so we need to oh, I I was very perplexed, Pat, when you said we were going to not bring this to this council. I think this council owes it to the next council to finish up this work. Uh because we've spent so much time on it and it, even if there are ones where we haven't reached consensus. Let's have the discussion in the council and see if we can get a vote so that the next council is dealing with a set of rules, not a lot of change recommendations. And if they want to bring it back, they can. But it we've been a council for five years almost. We've had these rules for four and a half years. I think that's right. Maybe it's five, maybe it's only four. And We've just spent a good portion of this committee's time on them. I think we should say, okay, this was like a really comprehensive review and here's what we did. And if we want a little sidebar that says, here were some of the bigger controversial areas, that's fine. But let's let's hand the next council a new okay. set of rules. I can agree with that. Mandy? So I think today we could vote a recommendation for the document we were just looking at, which was just, I think that document, Athena, is just the ones you had requested. And so we've been through them and I think reached consensus on all of them. And so we could probably vote a recommendation on that document for the council today so that then we're dealing with the another document that is so old that it doesn't have all the new changes in it, which might be problematic for Athena, but- um, We'll figure um, it out. We'll figure nope. it out. But but then, Pat, you could start writing the memo for this document and right. this set of changes. Right. But I, I, don't, I, agree with that. I, don't, I don't think we should try to split this up over two council meetings. I, I think we should do it all at one. No, I think that's fine. But but this is going to be a big report. And so if we right. voted these recommendations, Pat can start the report on this yep. set. That's that's, that's what right. I'm saying. That's fine. 
and and I know it's a push to do it on the 16th, but we are absolutely holding um, the meeting that's on the 13th of um, um, November to be all about finance. And so this is, and then the next one, which is the 20th is when we do the reading session and the town manager's evaluation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Go ahead. I, as CRC chair, I would caution holding any of the November meetings for not any bylaws. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> um, right. Rental reg should be back to the council sometime in November and it needs to be because the bylaws need two readings. So mm -hmm. I, I would caution yeah. saying nothing, but something is going on any agendas. I, Whether it's ready for the 13th, I have no idea, but um, just keep in mind there's bylaw stuff out there that need two readings. And Jennifer, and, this is gonna be a report that you and I will do together. Yes, on, and we can do that, right? I don't understand. We're not a majority of the committee, so yeah. Why don't we just say that Pat's going to write the report, and if she needs, I'll she ask for advice on needed from different councils. Yeah, or if you yeah, want to just give, yeah, just different committee members. Yeah, thank a you. committee member. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, or, from, or let's go back. <laughs> the committee can give you feedback on the report outside of meeting. But we're not. But you can't go back and forth and back and forth with members. Yep. Yep. No reply alls, and Pat won't. Yeah. Um, let's go to um, Mandy. You want to make a motion for uh, um, the vote on Athena's document? We have a document title, or so, or can I just say on the document, and you'll add into the motion the right title? Sure. <laughs> um, I move to recommend the town council adopt amendments to the town council rules of procedure as modified in document titled that at the September 27th, 2023 GOL meeting. Second. Okay, let's vote. Jennifer? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. Can I bring up one issue that's a jump back into public Comment? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not on the agenda. I keep forgetting to put it on the agenda. So, no, so, so rule seven, eight, and nine are on the agenda. So we can do anything in that prior document that's in those rules. Right. right. Along with rule four. And I'm not sure we've ever gotten to seven, eight, or nine. And I think there were other requests from months ago. Yeah. <laughs> are we doing Medicare for all? I thought it's not on this agenda. Didn't we do it already? We did it. We already did it. I need to talk to you, Lynn, about that. Okay. There were changes that the one of the community sponsor brought you we guys. We're going to we, bring it I've up. I've been in, in touch with the sponsors. The sponsors are having problems finding time to get together to talk about those changes. So we might not be able to do that until Friday. But the community sponsor is expecting October second, so oh, I'm trying to figure something out. <laughs> um, so are we? Are we doing? Let's go seven, to seven. seven, eight, nine. I must admit, yeah. Go ahead, seven, eight, and nine. Um, From that old old document. Yep, I have it up. Um, and I wanted to mention, uh, Kathy had suggested a change but it didn't it wasn't exact words um about the legislative process i'm not exactly sure what she wanted um but it was it was sort of in reaction to the the outreach proposal that shalini had brought and my advice to her was wait until TSO makes a recommendation or send your comments to TSO regarding yeah that just in in respect of what TSO is doing and Shalini's work on it. Um, it sounds like she also wanted to propose some changes to seven in terms of the legislative process. Um, but I'm, she hasn't sent words. I've asked her for words because her 
thoughts were unclear to me in the email. I can share the email if you'd like to see it, or we can just move on and wait for her to bring those changes. Can. Yeah, I think we can move on. So I'll talk about this one since it was my insert and it's been a long, long time. This is months. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea whether I, I, the goal of this, and I'd rather just have a conversation to see if the council wants to approach anything beyond necessarily this specific language. My goal was to figure out a way to moderate how long we spend on debate before we actually affirmatively decide to spend longer on debate or not spend time on debate. It seems like counselors are, well, I've tried different ways for using the motion to end debate, um, to call the question. Right now, calling the question, you need to wait in line. You can't just do it. And that can, if you're 13th in line, can take 20, 30 minutes to even do it, depending on how things are going. So I was looking for potentially other ways, although, I think my preferred method would be to, in any way, do a call the question that is a privileged motion that can be made without, you know, that can be made between speakers without having to be called on. Um, so not privileged like point of order where you can interrupt a speaker, but between speakers. I, I proposed that I think two years ago. But how do we essentially try to keep track of time and say, you know, we've been here for 30 minutes. Are we making any progress in deliberations or are we just rehashing the same stuff? And if we're just rehashing the same stuff, well, we can do that, but let's affirmatively decide to do that or decide that that was my thoughts, but it's more of a, how do we do time checks on the council um, on ourselves more than anything? So I wanted to say that before we specifically get into this wording, um, in general, like just, it would be better, I think, just to talk about how do we time check our own deliberations and debate on motions of, if we're all, you know, sometimes I've gotten the feeling all the counselors have already decided how they're going to vote. Are we going to spend another hour discussing it even if no one's going to change their mind? Um, and how do we sort of get to that point? It might just be more of a running of a meeting than a particular rule. I think can you make it a little bigger and Jennifer and then Lynn? Yeah. Uh I think that thank you. Thank you. I I like the concept of this. What I think would be much more useful is what I've seen more recently, and that is somebody calling the question. Because it seems to be that we're calling the question more often now when we realize that there is, that everybody's kind of solid on where they're going to vote. Are you yeah. suggesting, are you suggesting that the, that counselors don't need to be recognized to call the question? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Somebody on the council has to call a question. But I, I, I'm not opposed to this. I want to hear from Jennifer. Yeah, two things. I'm going to have to just, you know, bow out for about three minutes. Go um, ahead. But I did. I, um, I am more partial to it being, you know, deferring to the president on how they run a meeting. My concern about... Um, limiting it to 20 minutes is that's, you know, seven counselors, seven times three. Right. Yeah. That you really don't give a lot of people a chance to yeah. speak. I will be right back. Yeah. And I agree with Jennifer. It feels like sh too short a time. Uh, it would be 40 minutes if every counselor got him, you know, uh, three minutes to speak about 40 minutes, 39 minutes. If every, you know, there were no, shifts in there and, and size and breaths. Mandy? Yeah, so as I said, I'm completely okay with ignoring this proposal, um, but in terms of as a new rule, um, it was just trying to think of another way. I still preference allowing people to call the question between speakers um, because, you know, the way our rules are written, everyone who hasn't spoke 
gets to speak first. And I agree with that. I'm not saying, you know, um, you know, if we have 13 people that want to speak, we probably should allow all 13 to speak before we vote potentially. Um, but once that happens, you go in line again. And if you're slow in raising your hand, say you might be 10th in line and we'd have to get through another nine before we get to someone who's willing to, or is wanting to call the question instead of trying, you know, and, and by then you're done your debate anyway. So I don't, I'm, I'm not sure how having to wait in line to call the question speeds up discussion yeah. and, and, and closes that. So I would make calling the question sort of one of those semi-privileged motions, not where you can interrupt a speaker, but that you don't have to be recognized by the chair. You can you can make that motion between speakers without recognition by the chair. I agree with that. Um, I don't agree to uh, the time change, which we, you know, the time limitations here. Um, I think that it would be extraordinarily controversial in a negative way uh, because, oh, where you see they're trying to control who gets to, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I think we should get rid of this, but I agree about calling the question between speakers I remember recently waiting to call a question and being crazed <laughs> because we were all, everyone who was participating was saying their same statement over and over again. Uh, Athena and then Mandy, uh, Athena. Um, Mandy, it sounds like you're suggesting that calling the question would be appropriate after all the counselors have had an opportunity to make a comment. I, I mean, I, I guess I'm not suggesting we eliminate the ability before all counselors have had the ability to make a comment. I'm just saying, I'm not sure anyone would do it until all counselors have had the ability, but if someone does, I'm not sure the council would vote two thirds to end debate. Um, mm -hmm. But once everyone's spoken, that's when I think it's more logical to say, calling the question doesn't have you don't have to wait your turn in line to call the question mm -hmm. as long as something like that I, well i wonder and lynn this is more just your your running the meeting process but i wonder if it would be helpful if you ask counselors not to raise their hand again until every all the counselors have had an opportunity to speak so that somebody's not jumping ahead in line and you can just look at who has spoken unless you already have a method of keeping track of who's spoken once because my, my method is to try to mentally remember who spoke yeah that's um, that's hard i can it, imagine well, that it, it, yeah uh and it's um i often hear somebody say oh wait uh someone, Jeff, someone hasn't didn't spoken yet. to speak she yeah. just raised her hand you know yeah. But sometimes I don't choose to speak. There's not a reason to. People have stated whatever I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I don't not, I'm not you guys waiting for me. No, what no, no. constitutes an opportunity? No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that you know um, that you have to wait and to make sure that everybody has had a, has spoken if they want to. But just you know, if you yeah. If you've already spoken once, wait until people who haven't spoken speak until you raise your hand. I don't know. If yeah, something like that. Question. So, um, so I have my hand up. Um, I just want to remind people that every vote is almost always a required roll call vote. And so 20 minutes seems short for every roll call vote. Um, and yet I tro I absolutely and completely appreciate the spirit of this suggestion. Um, anyway, that's my only thought. Uh, anything else? So where are we with this? Because... I'm okay rejecting this change, but I would like us to potentially consider, as I said, making the call the question motion a semi-privileged motion. I uh, agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't want to accept that the rule, but I do want to do the call the question change amendment. And and basically what we're saying, just so I understand, is that you can't do it while someone's speaking, but you can do it yeah. in between. Right. I, I, think, I, I like that. Yes. So I had some wording a couple times ago, but it was not within this list of 11. I think it was below Athena, um, where there's a, you may not interrupt a speaker except for, I think there's a, a sentence like that. Um, no, no um, uh, go above, right after the list of the 11 motions or whatever, there's a paragraph of talking, of statements. Um, this motion to adjourn, um, oh, maybe it's not there. Somewhere there's about not being able to interrupt a speaker, except for motions of privilege. Maybe it's in a different rule. Well, now let me look up if I can find language and where I put it last time. Okay, thank you, Mandy. Maybe we just add it to the list. We can move on and I'll come back to uh, when I find it, I'll let you know. Okay. So were there other specific issues I don't, I don't have that older document with me. I apologize. So I don't know what else counselors were saying. I know Andy had something about legislation. Um, I'm just scrolling down through seven. Yeah. Um, Mandy, I was, I was looking for, <laughs> it's under 7.4, I think, okay, sorry, I'm, I can't, no, remember. I think it's under rule six or something, I'll have to go back, because it, it was well, under like, talk about discussion it. and debate where you can't interrupt people. So it would be under whatever five or six was about conduct of meetings. That must be where it was. Okay, so we can't discuss it then. No, I, and I will look to see where my proposed, what my proposed language Great. was. Thank you, I'm Mandy. Having problems finding it. Okay. Is there anything up for people in section seven?
So it looks like there was some section seven red stuff here. I don't know whether we discussed. Do we no. remember? Um, the right request. to request the right to postpone. Yeah, I thought we had talked about that ages ago, but I could be wrong. Because I remember there was a um, brouhaha in council about whether debate could continue. So I'm pretty sure that we. Well, debate on the motion stops. I think this language could be improved, I guess, is one of the things I think. Um, the language of the right to postpone does not preclude the council from continuing the discussion on the matter. Is that what you're... Yes. Yeah. Because it does preclude the council from continuing discussion on the motion. What's uh, and so what is the you difference? You could continue the topic. The motion and matter, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the right to postpone precludes the council from continuing discussion on the motion, but does not preclude discussion on the topic issue. <laughs> and again, this has always been the case. We're just clarifying. Mm, there was a there was a situation where the right to post the charter right to postpone was invoked and discussion ended. Ended. And the, yeah. And um, so but, there, but it was just that we didn't quite understand, but it's always said that you could continue a discussion on the topic. Or is this new? Mandy, what does it say in the charter? The charter, well, we could pull it out. Um, the charter, all, all discussion on the motion shall cease or something. Let me go get the charter. All discussion um, on the motion. I, I don't know. So we're not, saying we can, we're thinking of saying, but on, you can continue the it topic. It says, if a single member present objects to the taking of the vote, the vote shall be postponed until the next meeting of the town council, whether regular or special. So the charter says the vote. No, no, vote. but the last sentence is the use of this right shall have privilege over all motions must be raised prior to or at the call of by the presiding officer for a vote yeah. and once invoked all debate on the measure shall cease. That's no, this that's fairly clear. I think it, that the discussion ends, and I think that's why we ruled it that way. Yeah, in that I, instance, or the Lynn well, Lynn ruled the, it. the measure on the measure shall cease. So the measure is the motion. But isn't the topic also? It depends. We, we've had topics where there's four motions on the table, or four proposed potential motions, hmm. right? So I think we interpreted measure as the agenda item. Yeah. But isn't that what we're discussing now, whether the measure yeah. is the agenda item? Right. Yeah. I mean, in that instance, that's how I think we, we had decided to. So I think it gets... I have a question though. No, I've had my hand up. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm... Okay. I'm... No, no, just before it goes on. So I just want to know um there's a motion and then it has to be seconded and then you could call for it. This is the charter right to postpone which doesn't require a second. No, no, but somebody yeah. proposes a measure does it have, to, can you say, I propose something, somebody could say, you know, end debate, or does it have to be seconded? Because it's not really a motion on the table till it's seconded. So if someone makes a motion to adopt a measure, that needs a second. If, so the, nothing happens until there's a second on the motion to adopt a measure. The charter right post to postpone would happen after a motion is made and seconded. And seconded. Council, okay. And then the, the charter right to postpone doesn't require a second. Right. But, but you couldn't oh, call it sorry. off until there, somebody seconded the motion. 
yeah, it's it's not really on the on the floor until someone until then. the motion. Okay. Mandy. Yeah. So so the confusion I think happens when we have action items and don't have motions on the floor, but begin debate because what are you debating when there's not a motion on the floor? So Lynn, Lynn will know that I've I've right. urged her many times to, and, and we're getting better at it, to always put the motion on the floor because a few things, if there's no motion on the floor, you cannot move to basically stop debate and call the question because there's no question to call um, because there's no question on the floor. So I think, the better we get at making sure there's a motion on the floor before we begin debate and making sure debate relates only to that motion, the less confusion happens when, say, the charter right to postpone is invoked because that right is being invoked for that motion. Um, there might be another motion that's made after that that doesn't necessarily relate to the first one. Um, thinking about um our budgets we generally put our budget votes all on the same topic but there's a vote for operating then there's a vote for capital then there's a vote for borrowing then there's a vote for this well i could invoke the right to postpone on the operating budget but that doesn't mean we can't then move on and put a motion on the floor to adopt the capital budget under the right to postpone, the right to postpone only postponed the motion that was on the floor. So writing this sentence, I don't know how we clarify that, which is why I said I'd, I'd support a better wording of this, because mm -hmm. the, the, the confusion comes in. And in that instance, the confusion came in because the topic was under discussion topics without any action even proposed anywhere. It wasn't even under action items that night. And then a motion was made. And yes, I used my charter right to postpone to postpone decision and vote on the motion. But the topic was separate from the motion because the motion, in my mind, shouldn't have even been there because we were under discussion topics. It was one of the reasons I used the right because it was like we weren't even contemplating motions and action because of where it was on the agenda in my mind. Um, so the better we do procedure, the clearer other use of procedure becomes and what the next action is. I just don't know how to write that into this rule. Lynn? So the, first of all, I agree with Mandy Jo, the best, best thing is to make sure there's a motion on the floor. So maybe this, I'm, I'm not gonna have perfect wording, but let me try this. If an agenda item includes multiple motions, the right to postpone does not preclude the council from moving on to the next motion. But the agenda, the, the only motions, we put motions on the motion sheet, but that's not an exhaustive list. Councilors could make other motions. Right. So I think that that sort of, sounds like the only other motions that would be in order would be the ones on the motion sheet, which I, I don't think we can restrict. Okay, so then again, I, if I, the agenda item includes multiple motions or other motions are offered from the floor, the right to postpone does not preclude the council from moving on to the next motions. How about, I'm sorry for interrupt, for jumping mm -hmm. in between okay, you and Mandy, please. but um, how about the right to postpone does not preclude the council from uh, discussion and action on other motions related to the- Same topic are the something, same something. related to the same agenda item. I, I mean, I want to try to, you know, nail it down to it's an agenda item. We've listed it. That agenda item might have multiple motions. Counselors might make additional motions. You know, frankly, I think of when we did the um, 
CSSJC, CSWG uh, motions. We had several, it, it got very complicated and then there were additional motions, but anyway. Maybe. Andy, you get her hand up. She's maybe. Nope, nope. I just called on her. I was going to suggest sort of the opposite of this. Instead of does not preclude, I was going to say the use of Allowed. the postpone ceases debate on the motion on the floor. It, it it's not as clear though. Maybe maybe what you're doing with the yeah. sort of the negative is is better. But I actually I actually believe you pay, take the first sentence I wrote and you have it be the second sentence so that it's we're trying to be as clear as possible. How about that? That's yep. Good. Yeah, that works. The use of it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Andy. I'm fine. Mandy, you all right with that? Jennifer? Yes. Yeah, I think there's consensus on that. Shall we go on? Um, Just want to be clear, I have a hard stop at 1030. 11, I mean, 1130. 11, 11, 11. <laughs> You're <laughs> late for 1130. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Um, uh, so there was a request, that, sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask you about that note request for the reconsideration. Was that your request that we've taken it care wasn't. of? It wasn't. It was a counselor request. Hmm. We, we just discussed this. I no. know we discussed my recommendation. There was a counselor request to discuss this um or during the during GOL's earlier meetings about this. So if if it's okay with everybody we can move on. I'm I'm not sure what the request I know. think what I would suggest is that we just discussed it and we came up with a few changes to okay. whatever. We're done. All right. And then I think this might this might even be Kathy's suggestion, but it sounds like this was somewhat similar to what she had suggested. I'm sorry. I think the word "by" is left out. Proposed mm -hmm. by law to be by the council. This was like the exact wording that a councilor right. had brought forward. Yeah. yeah, but now we can change it. Right. <laughs> Mandy. So this wording is in replacing of being the form necessary for final adoption. Um, I think what the change is getting at is a different thing from what form necessary for final adoption was um, and, and changes things dramatically. So a counselor can propose something like Jennifer, Pam Rooney, Michelle and I did about rental registration where we said, hey, the council needs to work on this. We've got a draft. We know this draft is not good, but it's a starting point for something. But what we really want is the committee needs to be the one that drafts this change, which is which is different than, you know, so basically the introduction was not necessarily of a bylaw. Um, it was of a concept to revise the bylaw, which I think is what the what section, the new draft, this part in red is getting at, or counselors can actually propose bylaws. Full, you know, Evan did it in the past with a change to one of the bylaws for um, open containers on the town common, alcohol on the common. Um, Pat, I, and Kathy have done it in wage theft where it was a complete thing. And yes, things were changing, but it was in a form that could be adopted that day. Mm -hmm. um, that lessens the committee work. I guess I am concerned with if we adopt or change to this new set of wordings, 
we'll get a lot of proposals that say, well, I like, you know, I like the idea of having a bylaw that does Y, whatever Y is. So council spend all your time drafting that bylaw instead of the counselor actually drafting the bylaw and coming to the council with a proposed bylaw in that form. That doesn't mean it can't change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we're all familiar with it changes dramatically a lot at, at committees. That's the point of a committee, but to not require it be proposed, it's almost as if saying, well, a resolution can be proposed by saying, hey, we'll refer to GOL a resolution on um, making September national, you know, um, a, a proclamation proclaiming September um, ice cream month, but GOL write the proclamation. No, if you're going to sponsor it, you need to present it in a form that could be adopted, even if it's going to be changed. I, that That's my opinion. So I, I don't favor this, at least the portion that says you don't need to propose it in a form that would be necessary for final adoption. Um, the rest of it, I don't think relates to what needs to be on it. I think it relates to the process of maybe not introducing a bylaw, but getting it to committee. Lynn and well, Athena and then Lynn. Please let Lynn go first. Okay. Um, I believe that there is another counselor who has weighed in on this issue, and I'd like to make sure we're looking at all of the uh, evidence, all of the people that have weighed in. I believe the issue that the people are trying to get at and is that a, a bylaw may be brought to the council that appears to be in final form and ready for adoption. But in fact, it may be extremely complicated and instead of referring it directly for hearing to CRC and the um, zoning and the planning board, that it should be referred to a committee where it gets kind of worked over, then brought back to the council for a referral for hearing. That's what I believe people are trying to get at here. And I, that's what I believe Andy is trying to get at with his recommendations. You think it's only for zoning? Sounds it, like it. It might be more for zoning, but I don't think it's only for zoning. Athena? I think that that has been the case, that there's been some, some push to have a, an initial referral before the referral that starts the clock. Um, I I have advised a number of times that if there's not language proposed, then you know it's referring an idea doesn't really make sense. And I I brought this up most recently when the stretch energy code uh, bylaw change came up because we didn't have words. And so what's being referred? The idea to do something exactly what Mandy said. Um, I, I, I don't know that I'm going to get into the issue of, no, I will. My opinion is that Good girl. It's, it's the council decision to refer something if it, if it wants to refer it, if the council decision is that it wants sponsors to, to do other things with it. I mean, I, I think it's, can, I, I, no, I think I changed my mind. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Okay. But, but, I did, but I did want to say that referring an idea doesn't make sense to me. And I've, I've said that again. Right. Jennifer? Yeah. So I know this may not, the count, counselors that brought this, it may not only have been about zoning matters, but so I'm just asking for clarification. If it is a zoning matter, doesn't the state tell us what, I thought that was the issue that the state requires that it go 
to the planning board and then the clock starts. So I'm just wondering what control we have over when it's a zoning matter. Mandy, do you have an answer to that question before I go to Lynn? Or Lynn, if you have yeah, an answer. I think, I think if you go down into, let, in, into who can introduce, there's a section on zoning um, that might help clarify this answer, a zoning proposal. Um, MGL chapter 40A section five, if it comes from, right there, right there. Yep, no, you, you were there. Uh um, so there's a couple of things and and this isn't necessarily fully clear here, but I, I, I can pull up MGL 40A section five, but what it says is if it comes from, if a zoning proposal comes from the ZBA, the planning board, the PVPC, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, the planning commission that is our region planning commission, um, or 10 registered voters, or an individual owning the land to be affected by the change. Those, those, so item numbers two, three, four, seven, and eight, the clock starts within 10 days. So those two, three, four, seven, and eight, the council is governed by state law and the clock, the council basically has no choice but to refer to hearing and hold a hearing itself. Numbers one, five, six and nine, nine is the charter. So the charter is different. It's not really state law, but we would have to do something. We would have to consider it. We would have to vote on it. Um, if it's initiative, you know, we'd have to follow the charter and then we'd also have to follow state law. So, so the charter one would also almost start multiple clocks <laughs> in some sense, you'd be thinking it, multiple clocks start. So one, five and six though, I don't believe are specifically stated in section five of the general laws. And that means for those ones, the council can choose to start the clock or the council doesn't have to start the clock and they could refer it to something else to start, to then not start it, I think. Um, but we'd have to, make sure yeah you know, whatever ones the general laws refer to the council has no choice but to start the clock so i think with a council sponsor we don't have to start the clock we could send it to a council committee and say hey decide whether we want to start the clock or whether we want changes or not and then bring it back to the council and then the council can start the clock but with some of these the council must start the clock okay so with the proposed zoning revisions it went to the planning board at the same time it went to the crc was that because it was Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A, Section 5, or that's just what we did? That's what we did, and we started the clock with that. But we didn't have to. So I think that may be what some of the counselors are getting at. Maybe it should have just been referred to CRC. So, can I, it, this is a very complicated issue. I would suggest that it be listed along with all of the other documents that we've gotten, because I can and I can wait until the next meeting to talk about this, but over the five years, I can point to various examples of different situations where it was either referred to committee or it was referred directly for hearing. And I think we want to make this section of the bylaw a whole lot clearer about what has to be referred based on mass general law and what doesn't have to be referred for, for hearing, et cetera. So I, this is a this is a part of this set of rules that we really need to spend some time on. Okay. But may I say, to go back yeah. up to the, the proposed change above, I would still argue this is where we need to clarify that. Mm -hmm. But even if a person is ref doing zoning, they should be proposing something that could be adopted even if it isn't starting a clock or anything, that that a committee should basically always start with something that could be adopted without changes. Mandy Jo, I generally agree with you, but I, going back to the beginning of this council, when it became apparent to me that a group of counselors 
that constituted a quorum of CRC were meeting about rental, I nastily forced all of you to come forward and referred it back to CRC for development. At that point, you didn't have a fully fleshed out bylaw. So, and yet I think CRC has done a phenomenal job on we rest. Had, we had a bylaw that was in a form necessary for adoption. It was not something we recommended adopting. Okay. Right. Okay. We had a bylaw in a right. form. If you go look, you will see a proposed bylaw there. It was not something we said, here is a proposal that you could adopt. We don't recommend it. <laughs> we right. recommend well, taking and, that and, and know, fleshing out. And then I also do the waste hauler one. And, and that's been another one where a committee has spent a lot of time. Uh, anyway, let's let's make this a centerpiece of our agenda on the, at our next meeting. Waste hauler was proposed in the form of adoption as well. Yeah. So I'm gonna point at stretch code. <laughs> okay, good. Stretch code was not, and that was in some sense a problem, yet we had to go to the lawyers and say, who's gonna do the language? And then the stretch code sponsor found the the proposed, you know, the, the model language and said, just use that. Yeah. Like, So we could have said when that when that was brought forward, we could have said you have to bring this in the form final of final mm -hmm. for adoption, and the sponsor would have had to come back earlier than rather rather than at CRC. But right. Um, so so where we are, where are we with this suggested change in four? Is this just to come back and talk about it again? I think that's where we are. So I'm just going yeah. to go further discussion. On the 11th of October. Okay. Um, do you want to move on? It's 11.23, or do, we, do you want to leave it? Yeah. yeah. I guess what else is left? Can we get an idea? <laughs> uh, I guess I also, uh, before we set the agenda for Monday, Mandy Jo, um, we need to understand where we are on Medicare. Okay, there's a lot left. So we're not going to do Medicare for all on Monday. Doesn't sound well, Mandy, like were it. you referring to the, what I, Anita, I was referring to, to the Athena other pages scrolling. that Athena was scrolling oh. through on. There's a lot left. <laughs> I was just curious what was there. <laughs> totally not a response to um, no. Lynn's question. <laughs> no, Lynn's question doesn't belong in GOL because it's an agenda setting question. <laughs> So if there's a proposed resolution by, I guess, tomorrow before we post the agenda, then we can post it with a waiver of the rules. Well, GOL has declared one version clear, consistent, and actionable. Right. It's out of our hands. That's it goes right. to... Right now, the question is whether the sponsors are changing that or providing a potential motion to revise, a motion to amend what GOL... At the actual council meeting. Yeah. And so and, I need to work on timing with Lynn on that and okay. yeah. what that I, looks Can I just say, I would really prefer that it come back to GOL and not try to amend it in the council. Yeah, that, yeah that's probably a good idea. Shit. So uh, it has to be okay. formally referred back? No, it's no. an automatic referral if we propose it again. I, it like I said, it's not something for. I don't think it's something for GOL's discussion right now. It's something that no. sponsor and Lynn right. have to discuss about agenda setting. Okay, I am going to uh, assert my right as chair to call for public comment. Um, so, if there is anyone in the audience who wishes to speak, please raise their hand. Of course, there's nobody there. So now, public comment is over at eleven twenty-six. So we have four minutes. Shall we end early? <laughs> uh, seeing a gift of four minutes. And uh, we're going to save ourselves four minutes. And thank you all very much. Thank this you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> and uh,
And Athena, I need to get working on that memo to you. You want it by tomorrow, right? Today.